Russia remains a key figure for both worldwide nuclear arsenals as well as strategic stability, so it is important to understand the existing and future capabilities of strategic rocket forces and their sea and air-based companions. Regarding the land-based leg of Russian nuclear triad, the important part is rather evolutionary, deliveries of new Yars, SS-27 Mod 2, intercontinental range ballistic missiles or ICBMs in road mobile and silo-based variants have led to the complete rearmament of up to three missile divisions, with rearmament ongoing for three. The development of the Bugs in Rail Mobile ICBM project has been finished, but deployment was cancelled, which back in the day seemed a good sign, as this system was obviously excessive. Another future system, the Sarmat heavy liquid fuel ICBM faced a number of problems, but eventually reached the ejection test stage, which was deemed successful. This missile is said to be more powerful than the renowned Satan. However, Using it as delivery vehicle for multiple, 10 plus, warheads looks like an unnecessary capability given the existing new start limits, 700 deployed launchers and 1550 deployed nuclear warheads. Now we come to the gliding cruise block Avangard, a hypersonic glider previously known as Project 4202 or U-71. This type of payload said to enter serial production, is capable of precise hits on any target, avoiding any existing or future missile defenses. The mating of Avangard and Sarmat seems the most appropriate way to use those new toys. There were six ICBM test launches over 2017, related both to life extension and new payload types. As usual, the number was lower than previously announced. The same dynamics will probably remain in 2018. Overall, Strategic Rocket Forces Commander Sergei Karakuev remains committed to the 400 ICBMs at his disposal, but this number obviously includes non-deployed missiles, as otherwise there's no chance for Russia to get under new start limits. Given the rapid decline of the provisional warheads per vehicle coefficient over the last year, there's a chance that undeployment for existing heavy ICBM had already taken place. There's one more system possibly related to the ground leg, the nuclear-powered cruise missile possibly 9M730 with unlimited range. Its current status, research, and deployment schedules are yet to be disclosed, but it is worth noting, that examples given during the address were the sea-launched Tomahawk and air-launched KH-101. However, the launcher used during the test shown in the relevant video resembles several types of self-propelled launchers for tactical surface-to-surface -surface and anti-ship missiles combined. The sea leg of the nuclear triad launched several SSN-23A Sinovas and a single SSN-32 Bulava in 2017. The latter fact raises some concern as we are yet to witness the possibility of salvo fires with this missile system. The Dla nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine returned from repairs to the Northern Fleet, while Bryansk of the same type, left in turn for Zvezdika to undergo work to repair, modernize, and restore its combat readiness. Two Boran-3 Delta-3 SSBN are ready for combat duty in the Pacific Ocean. The first 955A Bore, Prince Vladimir, took to the water in 2017 as well. The original Bore class used the hulls from the Soviet Reserve, so this ship is the first of entirely new construction. It's worth noting that over the past year there were a number of confirmations regarding plans to develop an even more advanced underwater cruiser, Bore B, within the framework of the State Armaments Program 2027. There were a number of disclosures in an eventual statement by Putin on new unmanned underwater drones, namely Status 6, or Canyon, and Clavis in 2P, Harpsichord. It is rather strange that those two systems appeared in the same video and now are waiting for public designations together as well, because they obviously have different purposes. The main task of Clavis in 2P is believed to be expanding situational awareness for submarines, while Status 6 is an intercontinental nuclear-tip torpedo, 
capable of destroying coastal infrastructure and surface ship strike groups. It is yet to be understood how such a system, supposedly carrying a multi-megaton nuclear warhead, should be factored into existing and future arms control agreements. Status 6 is a strategic system, so it seems appropriate to include this beast into some future START-type treaty, but one must keep in mind that long-range nuclear-tipped submarine-launched cruise missiles, which are still in service in the Russian Navy, are not covered by existing treaties, while having strategic implications. The most important material event for the Russia Air Force's strategic aviation over the last year happened in 2018, first new to 160, Black Jack, heavy bomber took its maiden flight. Of course one must remember that it was built using an unfinished body and it is yet to be understood which types will be produced and when, but this is an important milestone nevertheless. A contract for 10 planes was signed. A proper future bomber, Pak DA is yet to be disclosed, the only specification we may be sure about is that it will be based on a flying wing scheme. There's word that some level of unification regarding avionics and weapons will be achieved for new Black Jacks and the Pak DA. As for today, the main capability increase for the air leg of Russia's nuclear triad is being achieved by the modernization of existing to 160 and to 95 MS. Bear H aircraft, so they can use KH-101 cruise missiles. This long-range stealthy cruise missile, KH-102 for nuclear-tipped variant, will remain the main armament for new heavy bombers as well. Heavy bombers remain an important signaling tool. Black Jacks and Bears routinely visit faraway airspace and airdromes, serving as a reminder of Russian strategic capabilities. Also, they are the only part of the triad that has seen real action, there were at least 66 air-launched cruise missiles launched at Islamic State terrorists in Syria. During Vladimir Putin's address, the air-based hypersonic weapons system Kinzl Dagger, was demonstrated, and even said to have entered test service in the southern federal district of Russia. The easiest way to describe this system is an Iskander M solid fuel RO ballistic mated to MiG-31 Foxhound interceptor. The system is capable of hitting ground and sea surface targets, avoiding missile defenses, and serves as a good example how existing technological marvels may produce synergy. It is yet to be determined if the stated 2000 km range means the missile only or the system as a whole. Russia remains fully capable of destroying the United States, and, most importantly, U.S. strategic command capabilities are roughly the same. This balance remains a pillar of global peace, even under the currently strained relations between the great powers. Discussions on limited nuclear use will likely remain unrelated to reality, any nuclear use will lead to full-scale retaliation.